بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so let's move on with understanding some of the terminology relating to segment routing here now the first thing uh, there are there are three things we need to understand one is uh, the global the probably the segment routing the global block and then we have something called node SID, the node segment ID, and then we have adjacent SID. So the first we'll start with the segment routing global block. Now it is a range of labels reserved for segment routing elements. And each box automatically assign the labels for segment routing called segment routing global block. So what this is exactly, this is basically the range. So basically the range or we can say like another way of allocation of the labels or the fancy term for allocation of the labels. So we call this range as a segment routing global block. So what is segment routing uh, global block? It is a range of labels which will be assigned or reserved for segment routing. And this is the default range. So just like this uh, segment routing global block range or the labels, Basically, they are going to replace your MPLS LDP, like replacing your LDP labels. Similar way here, this is a label range for segment routing here. So here we are not going to use uh, locally significant labels like we use in MPLS. So if you if we get back to the MPLS LDP, we use the locally significant labels, which will be assigned in the case of LDP. But whereas this is going to be the range, which will be used for segment routing segment routing. So we call this as a uh, block. And the default range will be uh, starting from 16,000 to 2399. Uh, this is the default range, which means by default, all the platforms, they have to agree on the default range numbers. So it is again, strongly recommended to use the same range in all the nodes, which means uh, on all the routers, probably on each and every router, the router one, router two, router three, router four, router five, router six, we, we just need to make sure that we are uh, we are using the same range in all the nodes. Again, it is recommended even though it is not mandatory because, because the values or the labels which are being assigned, they are domain specific. It means they have the domain wide significance and it is uh, strongly recommended that all the routers within that particular domain must be configured with the same range. So that's the reason you will see this configuration command will be common in all the devices on all the devices. So you can use a different range. However, there are some cases where you, you might be using a different ranges in different devices, like uh, an example where you have a specific nodes supporting a specific vendor. Probably they are offering support for different range of labels. In that scenarios, you might be using a different range, but again, as, as I said, it is uh, strongly recommended to use the same uh, global block, the segment routing global block on all the nodes. So that's the default range. And there is one more thing called a uh, node SID, the node segment ID or the prefix SID. Now the node SID or the prefix SID is the value which is assigned to the loopback interface to identify that particular node. Like I said, every device will be identified with one prefix, the ID, and that will be the loopback interface. So we use any of the loopback interface and that loopback interface is uh, assigned with a prefix SID index value. Like in my case, let's say this is how the configuration is. If you see, I'm using the interface. This is one sample configuration. We'll try to discuss more on the configuration a little bit later. So in this here, you can see I'm going to configure one uh, loopback interface. So I'm going to use one loopback interface or the loopback prefix, which is manually configured with a, a manually configured. And this loopback will be advertised inside the segment routing. And this is going to create a global prefix index ID. So which means uh, if I'm giving the prefix ID of one, depending upon the global block, let's say if I'm giving 16,000 index ID one, then the global the prefix SID will be 16,001, 16, means it will start with this range. Now we'll see that probably a uh, little bit later. 
But again, first, let's try to understand what is the job of this prefix ID. So prefix ID is a way we are uh, manually binding the loopback node and the label value. So we'll be assigning this to the interface. Like uh, you can take an example. We have configured some VPN v for pinning in a traditional MPLS. We got some PE to PE. Now in the case of PE to PE, when you configure, in order to send out the routes from the router one to router eight, the router one should know what is the next stop. And the next stop is going to be this 8.8.8.8, .8 whatever the loop back here. And then you need to have that end-to-end -end label switch path to ensure that your VPN v4 or VPN v6 is going to work. So which means technically here, you, you just need to only know how to reach that particular loop back to reach that particular next hub, that is a loopback interface of the remote PE. And then there should be some kind of a label switch binding or the label switch path along with the label binding information end to end. So here also what we are doing is we are all, we are creating a prefix ID here in our case. And this prefix ID is uh, just doing the job of the MPLS mapping, just like an LDP mapping, but without using LDP here. So, so, so basically here, you just need to know how to reach that loopback. So this prefix ID is going to identify each and every device based on that loopback interface. So the, each and every uh, device will be assigned with this prefix ID and that is something manually we configure. So we need to select one loopback interface and define the prefix ID value. And these values will be advertised inside the IGP. So whatever the interface you, you are going to use, that interface will be advertised in an IGP along with the prefix ID information. Because we'll be using this, uh, this interface with a, that should be advertised as a label. So not only IGP prefix is going to be advertised, it is also going to advertise the, uh, the label information in a special uh, TLVs, the tag length values or, or the LS, uh, LSA, LSAs probably in the, in the case of OSPF. So this OSPF and the ISIS protocols, whatever we are going to configure, they are going to carry those, the segment routing extensions. Mm -hmm. And the normal IGP prefixes are advertised normally. But again, uh, it's going to build the complete MPLS label forwarding end to end based on the IGP and those messages. So the prefix ID, the prefix ID is again is advertised. So the prefix ID becomes here in my case, let's say the loopback interface. And then there is a prefix ID. The prefix ID value will be decided based on the index value, whatever we configure here. So which means if I'm giving the index value of one, it means that the it means that the prefix ID or the prefix, let's say it is assigned for a one dot one dot one dot one prefix, and let's say that is a loopback interface. So it will be again getting the label of sixteen thousand as we are giving the prefix value of one means prefix index value is one, so it's going to use sixteen thousand one. So this label is a globally unique label, and when it is advertising the IGP prefixes, it is also going to include this information. So the end label will be the prefix ID index value plus the the global block range which means in my case i'm giving one plus sixteen thousand which is going to make sixteen thousand one a similar way if i give the prefix index value of 70 then it will be 70 plus sixteen thousand so it becomes sixteen thousand seventy so the prefix id so in simple the prefix id or the node id identifies that particular device label or that particular device, and it is globally unique label. So we need to make sure that this ID is globally unique. So which means I have to I have to assign the index value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this is something we have to manually configure, and this has to be globally unique. So which means whenever you are uh, assigning these index values, you need to keep a track of the index values whatever the values you are going to configure and on which device, which index value you are going to configure. And based on that, it's going to automatically get a label, which is again used for end-to-end -end label switch path. Mm -hmm. Now, all now again, as I said, the prefix 
SID is a globally significant, which means it has to be unique. And this number has to be unique. You cannot repeat the same number. Uh, the global block range should be same, recommended. And this has to be unique on each and every device. So finally, what is node ID? Node ID just represents that particular device inside the segment routing. And it is identified based on the loopback to, uh, uh, based on the any interface, which is uh, enabled, means we will be advertising this loopback interface inside the IGP. Along with that, it is going to also advertise the prefix SID. Now, the next thing, there is one more uh, thing is called adjacent SID. Now, whenever we uh, configure the segment routing in your network, there will be two types of uh, segments. Means it's going to distribute two uh, different uh, informations. One is the prefix SID, the prefix SID or the node SID, and the other one is adjacency SID. So the prefix SID, as we discussed just now, it is going to identify that particular device label or the device, so which is globally unique or globally significant, and it has to be same. And it gets automatically based on the range, press, index value, whatever we configure. Now, likewise, we also have something called adjacency SID, which is a locally significant value. Now, this value, you can see the adjacency. Uh, you have some specific values for adjacency, which identifies the adjacency of that particular router. So each router or each link, each router and the each link have an associated SID and we call that as adjacency SID. Now, why we do this? The main reason of using the SID, adjacency SID is to track the IGP neighbors, especially for MPLS traffic engineering. Because uh, adjacency SID is going to track the IGP neighbors, which means it's going to maintain the IGP neighbor information based on this value. And this is very important, especially when you are running traffic engineering configurations. Because in the case of traffic engineering, we need to know the neighbor label. Or like, like let's say you have an OSP of adjacency between these two, between the router one and the router two, and there is a label associated to the adjacency. And if I'm doing some kind of link protection, let's say if this link goes down, it has to reroute the traffic from this other path, which we do in the traffic engineering. So if you are doing that link protection, if that particular link, down, link goes down, then it has to reroute. And this is done by pushing the adjacency ID. So at the time of rerouting the traffic, it has to push the adjacency ID inside the label stack. So with the help of this label uh, adjacency label information, it's going to reroute the traffic. Again, this is going to assume based on SDN, you have a centralized SDN controller, which is going to do complete uh, path computation process centrally from, from the other side. So this adjacency uh, information is important, and especially when you're using rerouting of your traffic in traffic engineering, that's where the adjacency ID will be useful. And these values are advertised inside the IGP protocol. So whether you're running OSPF or ISS routing, this information will be advertised. Now this adjacency SID value is not configured manually, means there is no need to do any kind of configurations. So administrator, there is no need for the administrator to configure this or allocate these SIDs. Because whenever you enable the segment routing, the segment routing capable routers or the nodes automatically generate this adjacency SID. And they will be generating this automatically. And again, it is going to uh, use that outside the reserved global block. Means it's going to use the range outside the segment routing global block. And this adjacency SID is locally unique, uh, not globally unique, which means Locally, it is going to use one adjacency SID for each uh, specific neighbor or the interface. Again, you can see the picture here. This picture, you can see each and every interface have a different adjacency SID, which is going to be used in the traffic engineering 
for adding that reroute path information inside the label stack.